My name is Cassidy, and you're watching That Spooky Lifestyle, where we bring the ooky, the spooky, the creepy and the crawly into our everyday lives. Today, I am so excited because we are finally talking about Krampus. He was always on the list of to-dos, but today, we are finally doing it. I do have two quick disclaimers before we get right into it. One, I am Canadian, I only speak English, I'm gonna do my best <laughs> with pronouncing names right and places, but honestly, I'm just out here giving it my best shot and that's all I can do. My second disclaimer is that these videos will have swear words, spooky monsters, mispronunciations. They are not intended for younger audiences. Now that we have those out of the way, I always start these videos off with talking about what I already know about the subject. So what I already know about Krampus is basically he's like the evil Santa Claus. I know that he's kind of like a creature, kind of like a half goat, half demon looking thing. I'm not entirely sure what he does with kids. I just know that he like kind of punishes bad kids and I'm not really sure if he eats them or what he does, but yeah, that's basically what I know about the Krampus legend, if you will. So getting into the legend of Krampus, you can't really talk about Krampus without talking about Santa Claus. Now, Santa Claus he is very popular now. He's a fat, jolly old guy, and he brings children's presents on the night of the 24th and he only brings presents to good children. He rides a sleigh, he's got a bunch of reindeer. Uh, his legend has expanded to like he has a bunch of little elves that work with him and supposedly he lives up in the North Pole. And basically the whole legend of Santa Claus is to kind of help make children behave during the Christmas season so that hopefully they'll get a gift from him. Many people believe that Santa Claus actually originated from a Turkish monk named Saint Nicholas. He was known far and wide for his generosity, like he'd travel the country just to give to the needy, like he was a really, just a really stand-up dude and everyone talked about him because it was just like so unheard of to be like that generous. That theory does make sense too because a lot of people, at least in Canada, do refer to Santa Claus as Old Saint Nick. So Saint Nicholas, Old Saint Nick. I mean, I see it. In December 1773, Saint Nicholas made his first appearance in the Western world in a New York newspaper that was covering a uh, story about a Dutch family who was celebrating the anniversary of Saint Nicholas's death. However, the actual Santa Claus character didn't become popular until 1931 when Coca-Cola used this character in one of their campaign commercials. This campaign really sensationalized this Santa Claus character and the Western world quickly fell in love with his, the entire idea of him and he was just so fat and jolly and lovable, like how do you not love Santa Claus? So the Santa Claus figure became an overnight success and his popularity has really just continued to grow ever since. Some reasons for Santa Claus kind of catching on so quick and becoming such a success is because he really stands for like wholesome goodness and giving and loving and like really embodying um, I think a lot of family values that were important when he was released like you know just being good to your neighbor and um, helping out around the house, helping your family. Um, so I think that really resonated with a lot of people at the time and it's just kind of continued to grow since. However, we all know that life is about balance. <laughs> so with the good comes the bad. And that is where our good old Krampus boy comes in to play girl. So where Santa is depicted as being really good and jolly and rewarding people who, you know, care about their friends and family, Krampus is the complete opposite. Like he is, instead of taking the loving route of like making kids behave so that they get rewarded, Krampus is the opposite. He will hurt children or, you know, uh, punish them if they don't behave. So he's very much the opposite of Santa Claus. And a lot of people even refer to him as the Christmas devil because of A, how he acts, and B, how he looks. Because he is not, 
He's a face for radio, as they say. Let's talk about his appearance, because Krampus is definitely a interesting character, to say the least. So Krampus does... Oof, does? <laughs> So the Krampus character does originate from Europe. A lot of articles I read were like the Alpine region and then certain articles were like strictly Germany. So I don't know which it is, but I have read that for Krampus's appearance, there are actually a bunch of different versions depending on what region you're in. Because back in the day, traveling and um, like sharing of artwork uh, wasn't really a thing because it was just so difficult to travel in those areas because it's so like mountainy and bad weather and all of that. So each region kind of has its own version of Krampus. He's kind of like the boogeyman. Like back in the day, it was just like stories passed down verbally from like their parents and grandparents. And yeah, he was just kind of like the scary figure. He didn't have like specific outlines or qualities. But obviously as um, travel became more standardized, so did like sharing of artwork and stuff. So now Krampus does have a very um, distinct characterization. Like he has a distinct look about him. Yeah, that was the worst way I could have said that, but here we are, trekking on. Anyways, Krampus originates in Europe, the Alpine region, Germany, in that area. And he has a very evil appearance, which is why a lot of people refer to him as the Christmas Devil. So I have seen two pretty common versions of Krampus. One is him being all white and the other is him being all black. But no matter what color he is, his basic um, bodily, bodily body shapes, body outline, mm, no appearance, is kind of generally the same. So he's got these two really long twisted horns that really give him that devil-like appearance. He's always got like a snarling, disgusting, gross face, big teeth, tiny little black eyes. And then he's got this forked tongue like that of a snake and it just like, oh, it's always out and about and I'm just not here for it and then so he is basically half demon half goat so his bottom half is very much that of a goat he's got two hoofed feet he's kind of like a shadow lurker he's not just you know roaming the streets getting the mail some versions do show him like covered in chains but doing more research research <laughs> Doing more research, it kind of looks like that was added by um, Christian influence to be like Christians have a hold of the devil kind of thing. Because you know, when all that was going down, Christians were very popular for being like, we're going to take your beliefs and then kind of mold it to what we like. And then it's like a, a belief of both of ours kind of thing, you know? So there was a bit of that going on in Krampus as well with some of his features. So depending if you want to look at the one before Christians or after, like they're similar but not quite the same. Anywho, okay, so I have seen two different versions of when Krampus actually shows up. <laughs> shows up to show out, girl. So if you know this folklore, definitely leave in the comments below clarification on at least the folklore version you've heard or what you know, because I'm still a little bit confused here, and I think the confusion is from like Western Canada and North America influence on this um, story because now some of the details I think are getting a little like mm. anyways Krampus normally comes at least what it looks like the night of December 5th it's the night before Krampus knot which is st. Nicholas's day but some versions say that Krampus comes with Santa Claus on that night and some versions are just like that's the night that Krampus comes but I have seen other versions that say they come the night of the 24th I've seen more versions say December 5th but I have seen some throughout there, so I don't know if that's just like a confusion some people have, because in Canada, um, Christmas Eve is December 24th, and then Christmas Day is the 25th, so I don't know if, again, that's like the Christian influence or what's happening there, but let's just go with the December 5th version, okay? Okay. So basically, December 5th, if you've been good, Santa will leave a present in your shoe, but if you've been bad, Krampus comes and it's said that he'll like whip kids with these little like birch sticks 
or he also whips them with horse hair and then it is said that if you are really bad he t either throws you in a cage or in the sack that's on his back and he'll take you to hell for a year so just saying like the stakes here are super high like you really don't want to be fucking around when he shows up you know you can definitely see some overlap from the story I've already made a video about, which is the Yule Lads leaving presents in kids' shoes. So I don't know if by Santa Claus or Saint Nick they really mean the Yule Lads. Like sometimes, again, I'm not sure if there's like a bit of confusion because a lot of articles will be like, oh, the Yule Lads are like the Icelandic version of Santa Claus, but then some articles just say Santa Claus so it's like do you mean the Yule Lads? Do you mean Santa Claus? Who, do you mean Saint Nick? Like who are you actually talking about? There's definitely you can see like a merge of folklore, folklore <laughs> um, as kind of the years go on and cultures become more intertwined it is a bit hard to specifically separate the different stories. Just thought I'd throw that in. Okay guys I'm just gonna add this silver to my inner corner and then I'm gonna do my eyeliner off camera because like there is no way that I can do that while while talking about something. We're not done. I just, I can't do eyeliner and anything else. <laughs> Made the executive decision to also add my lashes. Okay, so Krampus loves torturing children. Like he just, that's his deal, bitch. And it's said that you can hear him approaching because you can hear like the jangling of chains and like bells ringing, like his bells his bells it almost sound like his balls his bells um clinking together and like jingling and stuff and like that's supposedly supposed to be a warning but like real tea what are you supposed to do like if you know this like christmas demon is coming for you like can you get out of it i don't know nothing i looked up said you could so not sure what the warning is for maybe just so you know like you're pending doom i don't know so the first tales of Krampus actually have like nothing to do with Christmas, which is super funny. So the name Krampus actually comes from the Germanic word Krampen, meaning claw, which may even have like a bit of a nod to like his outward appearance because he is very like beast-like, got lots of creepy crawly spooky ooky things going on. His origins do come from Norse mythology where he is a son of Hel. Um, Hel is the goddess of the underworld who is also Loki's daughter. You know, family relations. Love that. Well, back when Christians were trying to like suppress paganism and all that, they did try to completely get rid of any Krampus celebrations because it, he resembled so much of the devil. They kind of were like, oh, we don't like this cat. He's kind of like a hmm. I'm a little okay, spooky. Thankfully, that did not work out, and there are actually still Krampus celebrations to this day. People will send Christmas cards that have Krampus on them as like a Christmas greeting, Yule greeting kind of thing. Uh, they're usually pretty humorous and funny just because it's like, oh, make sure you're good this season or Krampus will get you kind of thing. Like, they're always kind of humorous and just lighthearted fun. And in some cities around the world, there are still like Krampus full on like celebrations or parades where fully grown men will dress up in like really ooky spooky Krampus costumes and they'll be like running around and hitting people the back of people's legs with like birch sticks and stuff like that and it's just again to kind of welcome the Christmas season and um, the kind of folklore that goes along with it and I think that is so funny I would love to go to a Krampus celebration at some point in my life I think that's so fun and just super like what a fun way to Bring in Christmas, girl. Yeah, guys, that is it. That is all. I hope you enjoyed this video on Krampus, our creepy Christmas demon. Definitely let me know down below if your family has any folklore or tales that they've told you about Krampus or any other creatures that you'd like me to touch on. Let me know in the comments. I love reading that kind of stuff. Uh, if you want more spooky content, head on over to thatspookylifestyle.com. There's lots of blogs over there that'll give you especially like good ideas for Christmas, um, like witchy stocking stuffers, and like witchy gift ideas, fun stuff like that. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook at That Spooky Lifestyle. I post a lot of like fun photos, creepy stuff, updates when the videos come out, things like that. And yeah, I think that is it. That's all guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and I'll see you in my next video.